A key component of the modern world economy, the chemical industry delivers products and innovations to enhance everyday life. It is also an industry in transformation, where chemical executives and workers are delivering growth and industry-changing advancements while responding to pressures from investors, regulators, and public opinion. Discover how leading companies are approaching these challenges here on The Chemical Show. Join Victoria Meyer, president of Progressio Global and host of The Chemical Show, as she speaks with executives across the industry and learns how they are leading their companies to grow, transform, and push industry boundaries on all frontiers. Here's your host, Victoria Meyer. Hi, this is Victoria Meyer. Welcome to The Chemical Show. This is our last episode of 2022. It is episode number 80. And whether you are new to the podcast or an old friend, welcome and thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining us on the journey of 80 episodes. It's a pretty tremendous accomplishment. Also, what I'm really asking for people, this is could be your holiday gift to me, which is take a minute to leave a review or comment on one of the podcast players, whether it be Apple or Spotify or Podchaser, or whomever you might listen to. And also take the opportunity to share this episode or your favorite on LinkedIn and with a colleague. I know that this helps to grow the podcast and it allows us to continue to make a bigger impact with individuals across the chemical industry. This week is a solo episode and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a look back on the most significant events of 2022 and also a look ahead on 2023 and tying those two things together, what those events were that transpired in 22 and how they might be playing out as we look ahead into 2023. So first up is the Russia-Ukraine war. If we go back a year ago, that certainly was not on my radar screen. I don't think it was on anyone's radar. And yet on February 24th of 22, Russia invaded Ukraine and it set off a wide variety of reactions. So this is significant on both a personal and a political level impacted many, many people. And there's no doubt about that. It also really highlighted the role that Russia and Ukraine both play in the global energy and chemical industries. So I think we've really become much more aware of the significance of Russia and Ukraine as global trade partners. We've become very well aware of European dependence on Russian gas and what happens when those gas flows diminish or get cut off. And we've seen that. I think what's significant is across Europe, European companies have had to make really significant plans for how to deal with diminished availability of natural gas. Now, we've also seen a lot of shipments of energy moving around, flowing to Europe and flowing elsewhere. But we've certainly seen the impact of the dependence that we've had on Russia for the chemical industry for feedstocks. So I think we're seeing the significance of this. And it's also really triggered a lot of price volatility and a lot of knock-on effects that have taken place through the whole year. I go back to February or even March of this year, and there was a belief, it seemed, that this conflict would get wrapped up and buttoned up pretty quickly. Well, that certainly has not taken place. We've not seen that this year. So when we start looking ahead, and what does this mean in 2023? Well, I think we're going to see more of the same. So what we know is the start of what's expected to be a very cold winter, that energy, whether it be oil, natural gas, is being prioritized on people rather than industry. And frankly, there's no obvious end in sight. So look for Russia and Ukraine to continue to have a significant impact on the industry in 23 both from a feedstock availability, a pricing volatility perspective, and really the shifting of trade flows that we have seen taken place over the last three years that started really with the pandemic. Russia-Ukraine has really had a significant impact on that and continue to look forward to that shift and that disruption in 2023. It also leads really to what I would say the second significant thing that we can look at in 2022, which is global inflation. So as high as 11% in UK and Europe, in some countries over 20%, in the US it's been over 8%. Inflation is real. So we maybe enjoyed, I think, a period of almost a honeymoon period of money and extra cash flowing into economies, 
uh, a really strong demand across the chemical industry, prices going up, up, up. And finally, it's really starting to show up. And we see it in consumer inflation, which is ultimately having an effect on individuals, on the consumer behaviors, and ultimately on industry. It has taken a while to fully feel that effect in the chemical industry. It's really not until the last fourth quarter here of the year that people are and companies are really saying, yeah, we're really starting to feel some of the effects. There's also, we talked earlier, and in fact, I had an episode earlier this year about what's the impact of inflation and recession. Are we seeing a recession coming? Well, the reality is that's for the economists to decide whether we call it an inflationary environment or recessionary environment. Those are labels. What does it really mean when we look ahead at 2023 and what chemical companies can and should be doing? And I think we'll be talking about this more on the podcast as we launch into 2023. But while inflation, we're seeing maybe a tempering of inflation, it is certainly not going away. So I see media maybe saying, oh, it's down to 7% or 7.5%. Well, that's still pretty steep inflation. Yes, it's less than it was at some point during the year, midsummer, mid year, but we're certainly not seeing inflation going away. World economic leaders are looking to policies and practices to help manage through this. What does it mean for the chemical industry? Cash is king. We've seen this many a time. Cash is king. And when we're in periods of uncertainty and volatility, people are working to preserve cash. And yet, some of that real cash protection came in 2020 and 2021. And what's striking to me that here we are in 2022, some of the biggest companies are recording record profit. So profits have been strong. Cash is still king. As we move into 2023, what I see happening, what I'm hearing from clients and working with clients on and working with others across the industry is securing the foundation. So What does it mean from a supply-demand perspective? What does it mean from just your fundamental economics of your business? A focus on customers and customer experience. So there is no doubt that when inflation persists, we are going to see a softening in demand. It is not going to be, oh, I can sell anything I can produce at any price. There will be a softening. And it's during those times that the focus on customers and the customer experience and the relationships that you've built with customers and suppliers reign supreme. And so the winning companies are those that are really going to be focusing in on customer experience and supplier experience and ensuring that they are creating differentiation there. The other piece is that I think companies are still continuing forward with strategic decisions and investments. There's no doubt, and in fact, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but ESG is driving investment, sustainability and circularity is driving investment, and fundamentals of the industry are driving investment. So we'll still continue to see this in a very strategic way. We'll be right back. At EcoVist, they're accelerating the transition to a sustainability-driven future. Their long history of innovation, expertise, and customer collaboration supports the development of proprietary catalysts and services across their two industry-leading businesses, Advanced Materials and Catalysts and Eco Services. Advanced Materials and Catalysts is a leader in proprietary and customized technologies for polymers, cleaner fuels, emissions control, and circularity. EcoServices is the largest North American recycler of spent sulfuric acid. EcoVist, your catalyst for positive change. The third really significant thing of the past year has been the continuation of China's zero COVID policy. Now, as I'm recording this here in mid-December, China has relaxed that policy And in fact, as I talked with John Richardson of ICIS in episode 79, we talked about this and what does it mean for the industry and what's the effect? So certainly the policy itself, while protectionist in many ways for China, for its industries, for its people, there were reasons those policies were put in place, certainly destroyed demand, destroyed consumer confidence. I would say Chinese consumer confidence. When I talk to people and get stories about concerns that people have had about 
willingness to go out and buy products, willingness to go out and about. Zero COVID has been pretty scary for a lot of folks inside China, which then, of course, has a significant impact on the global economy and the chemical industry, whether it be about product flows, shipments, the ability to move products in and out as ports close and open and people availability shifts. We've had a significant supply disruption really over the past three years. It continued into 22 in China far more than people anticipated. One of the striking things that I've seen in a couple of global companies basically saying they can't afford to invest in China. And so they are driving investment decisions towards a more regional supply chains, focusing in on North America and to a certain degree Europe, although as we already talked about with Russia and Ukraine, Europe is challenging. It's a challenging business environment. But we're certainly seeing a drive towards regionalism. And that is continuing on from where we started with the pandemic in 2020, has gotten heightened here in 2022. So as we look ahead into 2023, as zero COVID controls in China relax, we're going to be seeing a spike in COVID cases. We've seen it. And to be determined as to China's real response, are they going to have a policy whiplash and backtrack and tighten controls related to zero COVID? Or are they going to kind of just allow this to shift? I don't know. My crystal ball is not clear in this space. And I don't think anyone's is when you start reading about it or talking to people in the region. So what I would say is, as we look ahead, this is really driving us as we go into 23 and beyond mindful regionalism. Companies continuing to develop alternative supply demand sources, a shifting of supply chains. And we've talked about this on the podcast before, and we'll probably be talking about it again into, let's call it north-south supply chains and regional supply chains, as opposed to east-west global supply chains. And that is going to continue to evolve as we go into 2023. The fourth thing is logistics in supply chain. And that has been a theme more than ever for the last couple of years. This year, one of the really striking things to me was the railroad and the potential strike of the U.S. railroads narrowly averted. So we've put a couple of band-aids in place. And I think the final band-aid may actually be a fix and we're averting and avoiding a railroad strike. Those in the chemical industry recognize how significantly dependent we are on the railroad. And in fact, what I've seen from AFPM and Rob Benedict, who's been on the podcast earlier this year, writes a lot about it and talks openly about the fact that we still continue to need reforms. So looking ahead, continue to see this focus on domestic supply chain, international supply chain, and strengthening and creating it more resilient and frankly, putting more pressure to make it a more robust system for everybody that's engaging. Some other themes. So I would call these not necessarily events because these tend to be more themes as it relates to it. So ESG, sustainability and circularity have become household names and household words. A continuing focus on ESG, sustainability, circularity. Although at a recent event I participated in, most of the people polled during this event said they don't really expect us to reach net zero targets, us, the energy and the chemical industry, by either 2030 or 2050, those targets. However, there's clearly this recognition that we are making significant and continued focus and investment. So when we look at this, this is led by the majors and also by small innovators. What I think is going to be significant in 2023 is that we are going to see companies that are in the middle of the value chain take a much bigger focus on sustainability and ESG, driven by reporting requirements, driven by consumer demand, driven by the pull that's coming at the end of the value chain. What that looks like is clarity on their current sustainability stories and clarity on their sustainability and ESG strategy. And what I think is an interesting focus, when we talk about ESG, we really often focus on sustainability, and yet it's environmental, social, and governance. And so we will continue to see focus in all three components of that as it relates to ESG as we go forward into 2023. Digitization has been the trend of the 2020s. It's been the trend for a long time, but certainly has been really heightened. 
And what I see from companies across the chemical industry is a struggle to find the right balance between what their customers want, what their employees want, what the right answers are, and the right solutions, and frankly, the most economical solutions. What I see going forward in 23 is digital is not going away. This is not something we're brushing under the rug and ignoring, but there's going to be an increasing focus on structure and platform and really optimizing what companies have today, a real focus on data efficiency, and then moving forward into figuring out what their next thing is. I think of it as a cycle around and maybe almost even be considered an agile cycle where we innovate, we optimize, we develop, we implement, and we keep the circle going and learning. But digitization is going to be yet a continued focus in 23. Supply chain, I've already touched on that. The three things that stand out for supply chain in 23 is regionalization, rationalization in terms of making supply chains much more rational and optimization. Driven, of course, by the economics, driven by China, driven by some of the challenge that we've seen over the past few years, the supply chain is going to continue to evolve. The fourth item I'm going to put on here is talent. So over the past three years, talent has been a bigger issue than ever. It continues to be a big issue. When I talk to clients, when I talk to people across the industry, getting the right talent is challenging and critical. And in some places, there is a real talent shortage. And whether it be the right talent, whether it's the right talent that wants to come into the office after people got really accustomed to working from home, talent is going to be critical in 2023. I personally have a prediction that we are going to see a mashup in some ways of digital supply chain and talent coming together, especially as many companies that are digital only companies have gone through significant layoffs. We are shedding a lot of talent back into the workforce that a smart chemical company is going to go find its way to grab the digital talent that they want, the innovators, those that are understanding how to do business in a new way and in a more customer and personally centric way and bringing those into the workforce. We'll see. And that leads me to my last one, which is customer experience tied closely to the employee experience. I've talked with folks, a lot of people, companies are having problems getting their employees to come back to work. And what I talk about a lot with people is activation energy. It takes a lot of activation energy to decide to go back to the office on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, however people are going back in. And a lot of this has to do with creating a really compelling experience. As we go into 2023, experience is going to be really critical, whether it's the customer experience or the employee experience. Are you creating an experience that wins, that draws people to your business and your company and engages them most effectively. And I think we're going to be seeing 2023 is the year of experience. I'm calling it. Anyway, that I'm wrapping it up. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I hope that everyone gets a chance to take some time and enjoy some time with family and friends over this holiday season. We will be back in 2023 with another great year of content on The Chemical Show with some new and exciting activities. Be looking for some in-person events and more. Thanks for listening. Please share the podcast with a friend or three and come back and listen to more. We'll talk to you soon. We've come to the end of today's podcast. We hope you enjoyed your time with us and want to learn more. Simply visit thechemicalshow.com for additional information and helpful resources. Join us again next time here on The Chemical Show with Victoria Meyer.